Tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free, tis a gift to come down right where we ought to be. When we find ourselves in the place just right, we will be in the valley of love and delight. Simplicity is gain To bow and to bend We shan't be ashamed To turn, turn Will be our delight Till by turning, turning We come round right Tis a gift to be simple Tis a gift to be free Tis a gift to come down right Where we ought to be when we find ourselves in the place just right, we will be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we shan't be ashamed. To turn, turn, will be our delight, till by turning, turning, we come round right Tis a gift to be simple Tis a gift to be free Tis a gift to come down right where we ought to be And when we find ourselves in the place just right We will be in the valley of love and delight Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Sacred Space. I missed you all last week. Uh, last week, we had a special concert by Michael Waite, who's a musician and a member of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Marquette. If you haven't had a chance to check out um, that video, I highly encourage it. It's still up on our Facebook page and our YouTube page. Um, but this week, we are back to our normally scheduled program. Uh, and we are excited to welcome a guest preacher this week. We welcome Bishop Carol Gallagher. Um, Carol serves right now as the regional canon for the central region in the Diocese of Massachusetts. She has also served as assistant bishop in the Diocese of Montana, where she developed relationships with native leaders and congregations. Um, and she's also been the bishop missioner to the Bishop's Native Collaborative. So we welcome Carol and we're glad to have her with us this week. So let us pray this week's collect from Prayers for an Inclusive Church. Divine Reaper, who alone can judge without vengeance or fear, free us from our desire to repay evil with evil. Root us in creation's longing for freedom from oppression, Shape us by hope unseen for the victory of love. Through Jesus Christ, with whom we suffer and are glorified. Amen. Listen to the words that God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Escucha la palabra que Dios ha dado, escucha quien a tu lado está, escucha quien todo lo ha creado, aunque no entiendas, escúchala. Listen to the words that God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Listen to the words that God has spoken.
Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice who began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed seed among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the word, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The son of man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. My name is Carol Gallagher. I'm an Episcopal bishop and right now I serve in the Diocese of Massachusetts. I am an enrolled member of the Cherokee Nation, and um, my mother's maiden name is Betty Walking Stick or Woody Oranisti, and um, my given Indian name or native name is Omagaloska, which means waterfalls. I am thrilled to be here with all of you today to talk to you a little bit about what it means to live with weeds. And, um, I am thrilled to be sharing with you and learning with you about where God is calling us in the midst of this time, this time of pandemic and this time of great change and great anxiety over um, the continuing issues of racism and the way we are as a country and the desire in many of us to move from a stuck place to a new place of inclusion. So today I want to focus on our gospel about the wheat and the weeds and how we are to manage in all of this. I just came in from working in my garden and um, there's still dirt under my nails, which I'm not going to show you, but I think um, you all understand when you work in a garden, there's a lot of dirt and other things that gets in your nails and skin and it's um, a very tactile process. We hear this story in our gospel about Jesus telling his disciples that the kingdom of God is like a farmer, a gardener who went out to plant wheat and then weeds get thrown in by what is called an enemy. And we all know how overwhelming and dangerous the weeds are in our life, how there's so much out there that can feel like it's going to destroy everything we've tried to do. There are people who want to shut folks down and turn away from inclusion and turn away from um, helping people to get healthy and turn away from wearing masks. All of those controversies that we're dealing with um, feel like weeds in our garden weeds in our lives. I come from a long line of gardeners. My grandpa walking stick, um, Simon Ralph walking stick, was a famous gardener and when I was a child I grew up with him 
planting all sorts of stuff and growing all stuff, sorts of stuff in our backyard and just wandering the rows in the garden with him and hearing stories about the relationship of the growth to our own lives and some funny stories and silly stories and stories from his own life. So the garden was also a place for me of learning and nurturing and raising up even as a small child. My mother was a wonderful gardener and so many of my family and my tradition are gardeners, folks who grow incredible gardens, both vegetables and plants, but also artists and folks who take the time to grow things, grow good things. And we all know how hard it is when we are attacked by weeds and when we have not the right soil or the right way to grow things or the right light or all of the challenges we have when we're trying to grow vegetables. Um, and flowers. When I was living in Sitka, Alaska, and we had moved there from New Jersey, I was doing an interim on this island in the southeast of coast of Alaska. So there's only two ways to get in, by plane or by boat. Um, and I was struggling about how I was going to grow some small container plants in this very limited, what I thought was limited environment coming from New Jersey, where we call it the Garden State. So I um, was so excited when one of my friends, um, one of the deacons in the church gave me some tomato plants and I nurtured them and took really good care of them and grew them and the flowers were gorgeous and we even had them on a rolling dolly so if it got too cold at night we could bring them in to protect them from the cool night air that might be too much for tomato plants who love sun and heat. And so I nurtured and babied them throughout the summer and into the fall and had not one, not one tomato. So I was very discouraged. I, not unlike the weeds that grow up in our gospel story, I thought, how could I have failed so miserably and isn't there something I can do? So I went to the deacon friend who gave me those plants and they said to me, she said to me, and others chimed in as if I was just, you know, never had grown a plant in my life, as if I was a brand new gardener. They said, well, you know there are no bees on this island, so you have to pollinate them yourself. And after I laughed really um, loudly and was in shock about this process, I said, what do you mean? How do you do that? And they described that sometimes they pollinate with a paintbrush and sometimes they pollinate with a Q-tip and sometimes they pollinate just with their fingers. And, um, and I am still, to this day, flabbergasted by what it means to live in a world where there weren't any bees. And it wasn't anything in my experience. Just like the pandemic is nothing in any of our experiences, our Racial tensions are not outside of our experience, but in this time of pandemic, of COVID-19, of arguments over masks or not masks, just the constant clamor. It feels like our healthy world, our healthy spaces, our church is surrounded and being choked by weeds. But the good news of our gospel is Jesus reminds us that we could focus on the weeds, focus on the failures, focus on the places that are choking us, the places that are trying to take us down, or we could focus on making what is healthy and growing, nurture it, grow it, continue to take care of it in ways that we maybe haven't before, and allow ourselves to be those who are tender caretakers, are people of love and kindness, who are all but willing to do what it takes to grow the best church, the best communities, the best families we can. God doesn't ask us to take on battles that aren't ours. God doesn't take, ask us to, you know, rip every weed out because there's too much vulnerability right now. There's too many healthy plants that could be destroyed, too many healthy people that can be destroyed if we go on the attack. But if we are people of love and nurture 
And if we take seriously the call to garden with love, to nurture with love, to grow with love, to help with love, with that tenderness that only we find in Christ Jesus, if we are only willing to be those people, then there will be a healthy result. There will be an abundant result. There will be more than we could ever count, even though right now everything seems meager and shallow and dangerous. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God is pointing us to the place of abundance. God is saying there is still more for us. There is still a way to be holy and gracious and loving, even when it feels like there are weeds trying to choke every good thing out. We all have different weeds in our lives. We all have different soil and different climates and different motivations. But God stands with us promising to help us even in these times of darkness or what feels like darkness, in this time of weeds that seem more abundant than the love and the nurture and the abundance of our fields our churches, our communities. God stands with us today to remind us to do what we can do to nurture what is there and then to be abundantly gracious with all that we have been given. I want to end by seeing you not a traditional native hymn, but one I have often sung to my children and that I have used with Sunday schools and adults across um, this continent, which is an old folk song, but it reminds us that it is the small increments of love, cherishing, tenderness, and kindness that will get us through these times where the weeds seem to choke, it will get us through the times when this pandemic seems to overwhelm us, it will get us through these times when the racism and white supremacy seems to be choking out all the positive conversations and the relationships that people have. And it goes like this. Inch by inch, row by row, God bless these seeds I sow. Please keep them safe below till the rain comes tumbling down. Amen. You are above us, O God. You are beneath. You are in earth. You are beside us. You are within us. O God, you are in the betrayed and suffering people of our world, just as you were in the broken body of Jesus. We pray now for all that concerns us. Let us offer our own prayers, both spoken and unspoken. There is enough bread for everyone. There is enough bread for everyone. There is enough bread for everyone. When we open up our hands, there is enough bread for everyone. There is enough bread for everyone. There is enough bread for everyone. When we open up our hands, there is enough.